discharging capacitors. In order to describe the discharge of capacitors, we're going to use the mathematics of exponential decay. We're going to be using this formula over here in which Q over here stands for the charge at time t. Q0 is the original, the initial charge. And we had the exponential function as well, in which T stands for time, C is the capacitance of our capacitors or a combination of capacitors, and R will be the resistance in the circuit. The exponential function in general describes the, mathematic, uh, the mathematics of both rapid growth and rapid decay. In this case, when, when we are discharging a capacitor, one of the key features is that the charge is released really, really suddenly. So we can produce a very high current in a very short amount of time. You probably used to be using this exponential function in, uh, in A-level maths. However, if you're not doing A-level maths, I have a dedicated video that will teach you everything that you need to know about exponentials for A-level physics. So please check that one out. Now, this equation also applies for the current, which is also decreasing rapidly with time. And additionally, for the voltage as well, which is also decreasing rapidly with time. So the equation that we're actually given for the exam in the formula sheet is actually just a general equation. So rather than giving us three different sets of exponential decay equations, what they're giving us is that x, let's try writing that again, is equal to x naught e to the minus t over cr. And all we need to do really is just see which one of those quantities is best to use in a question. Okay guys, so let's have a look at an example question of applying those equations. We have a 500 nanofarad capacitor which has an initial charge of 5 millicoulombs and is discharged through a 50 kilo ohm resistor. Calculate the charge left 0.1 second after it has begun discharging. Since our first step is to just to select an equation, in this equation we're talking about charge, so I'm going to select the first one. So I'm just going to write it down over here, always useful to write down equations. Q is equal to Q naught e to the minus t over c. R. In this case, we are looking for Q, which is the charge at time t is equal to 0 0.1. So I don't need to do any rearranging and I can just start substituting some values in. So I'm going to say that Q is going to equal Q naught, my initial charge, which is 5 millicoulombs. So this will be 5 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 3. Then I'm going to multiply that by my exponential function. So e raised to e to the minus, uh, our time is 0 0.1 seconds. Then I'm going to divide this by my capacitance, which is 500 nanofarads. So I'm going to leave some brackets here just to make things super clear times 10 to the power of minus 9. And my resistance is. 50 kilo ohms, so that's going to be 50 times 10 to the power of 3. Notice that there is quite a lot of scope for error here, so we need to be really careful when we're including all of the prefixes. For example, almost in everything that we've written down, there is a prefix for it. We have 5 millicoulombs, which is 5 times 10 to the power of minus 3, 500 nanofarads, 10 to the power of minus 9, minus 9, and we get an additional factor of 50 kilo ohms, which is 50 times 10 to the power of 3. 
Now for this example, I thought that it would be really appropriate if I showed you guys exactly how I input things into my scientific calculator. Uh, I firmly believe that it's by far the best to actually input everything in at once in the following form. So you can see uh, how the five times central power of minus three goes here. You can see the exponential function and how I fitted everything in using um, the fraction feature of the calculator. And as you can see from my calculator display, the amount of charge that's left at one point, but 0.1 seconds Q is Let's use two significant figures in this case. So this will be 9.2 times 10 to the power of minus 5 coulombs. So we can see that the charge has decreased very, very significantly. In fact, it's rapidly approaching zero even after just a tenth of a second. Okay, folks, so hope you've enjoyed this quick video about capacitor discharge. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.